If you're a mortgage professional and you're looking to get more yeses to your presentation, I'm going to show you how to put together a presentation that your mortgage customer is going to feel foolish if they say no to it. My name is Mark Blundell and I am the founder of Mortgage Sales Mastery and we specialize in helping mortgage brokers and mortgage professionals across the world to scale their businesses and add another hundred million dollars of lending per year to their current production level. The whole idea of when you speak to a mortgage customer is obviously to get a yes. And the more yeses you get, as opposed to thanks, leave it with me and I'll come back to you, the chances are that you're going to earn more money. So in this presentation, I'm going to show you what you need to include in your dialogue or conversation with your mortgage customer, whether that's when you're face to face with them or on the phone or on a Zoom call. I'm gonna walk you through the specific steps that you need to include into your offer to the customer that'll create an offer that they hear that will be too difficult for them to say no to. Now, when you're thinking about presenting an offer to a mortgage customer, or you think about the very first conversation you have with a potential customer, often that conversation will start out by the customer saying, hey, I'm looking for a mortgage, or words to the effect of, I'm looking for a mortgage at a really good rate. Now, I will tell you this, and I'm 100% certain, that if your conversation centers around the rate of the mortgage that you're offering, you are just in a race to the bottom because every other mortgage broker, mortgage originator, mortgage professional in your marketplace is doing the exact same thing. Now, if you think about your mortgage customer when they ask you about rate, imagine a scenario where we were quarantining any question about rate from the mortgage customer. In other words, they could ask you any question they wanted except something about rate. How many questions would your mortgage customer be left with? Now, what you've got to understand that in order to put together a presentation or an offer that a mortgage customer will feel foolish to reject, if they do reject it, is you've got to think about, well, what does the mortgage customer want? You know, if you deliver what a mortgage customer is looking for, if you deliver on the idea that a mortgage customer is chasing a specific outcome when they give up some of their time and talk to you, then you put yourself in a better position to present a uh, solution to the mortgage customer that will satisfy their needs, their goals, and their desires. Now, obviously, rate is important uh, because the mortgage customer understands that the higher the rate of the mortgage, the more money they will end up paying. But you've got to understand that a mortgage is simply a solution to a problem that a customer has. Now, in terms of delivering value to your mortgage customer, Think of it in these terms. At the end of the day, every single mortgage customer, when they approach you and ask you about a specific loan, has a desire to solve a specific pain point. Something's happened in their life ahead of you talking to them that's given them the inspiration, motivation, or momentum to make contact with you and discuss the potential of taking out another mortgage. Now, if you are well prepared with a strategy of how you're going to deal with this conversation and how you're going to put forward your value proposition so that the customer says yes at the end of your conversation or words to the effect of, so what are my next steps? We've got to stop and think to ourselves, well, what is it that the mortgage customer wants? Now, when it comes to a typical mortgage customer, generally, every single mortgage customer has three questions on their mind that they want answered. Now, at the end of the day, sometimes the customer doesn't even ask you these questions, but I can assure you every single mortgage customer that you speak to will have these three questions on their mind. 
And it's up to you to be able to direct the conversation in such a way that answers their specific questions. Here are the three main questions that a mortgage customer wants answered. Number one, their first question is, will you lend me the money? In other words, can I get an approval? Will you lend me the money for what it is that I want to uh, get a mortgage for? Number one question. Number two question is, how long will it take? Will it take? In other words, the mortgage customer wants to know how long is it going to take for them to be able to get an approval uh, or the money landing in their account or the funding for what it is that they want to achieve. They want to know how long is it going to take. And number three is what will it cost? In other words, how much will their repayment be per month? or per bi-monthly or weekly or whatever it is. So number three is what will it cost? Now you might think these three things are relatively elementary and in one way, shape or another through your conversations, you probably think you answer your, the, the, these questions that the mortgage customer has on their mind. But let's just park this for one moment and let me talk to you about the four key elements that you need to focus on in order to create an offer to the customer that they will find that they're being foolish if they say no to. And the first thing we've got to think about is, well, what is the ideal or the perfect outcome that the customer is chasing. So what is the ideal outcome that the customer is chasing? So when you think about a customer's inquiry of you, a mortgage customer's inquiry of you, at the end of the day, if you could climb into their mind and understand exactly what the end point is that they're aiming for, what it looks like, how it changes their life, if you can deliver a presentation that addresses that ideal outcome, it's more than likely that at least your mortgage customer is going to be interested in what it is that you talk about. So number one, ideal outcome. Number two that a mortgage customer needs to hear about is how realistic is their question and how realistic is the likelihood of them getting an approval for what it is that they're trying to achieve. So how realistic is the next thing that we need to think about. The third thing that we need to think about is what is the cost? So in other words, yes, that might tie into rate, but in real terms, how much is my payment going to be per month or per week with respect to what it is that I want to talk about? And the fourth thing that you need to consider when you're constructing an offer that a mortgage customer will find difficult to say no to is what is the sacrifice involved in actually obtaining the end outcome? So sacrifice. So what is the sacrifice involved? Now, if you want to put together a presentation that will attract a mortgage customer, that won't end in words to the effect of, thanks, I'll uh, have a chat to my partner and come back to you. You have to create an offer that addresses each of these four things. Now, let me tell you a little more about each of these four things. And what I want to tell you about is this. Fundamentally, if you can amplify the first two of these four things. So in other words, if we can increase or speak up the first two points here to the customer, we will in effect bring the customer closer towards us. So if we talk in a positive way to a customer when they say, I'm interested in accessing $100,000 out of my equity in my home because I want to remodel or renovate my home. You want to talk about whatever your answer is going to be to that scenario in a positive way. If you convey to the customer things like, oh, 
it'll be a bit touch and go, or I'll see what I can do, or let me try my best for you. You are not amplifying the likelihood of the customer getting their ideal outcome. Number two is if you speak to your customer and they say, hey, I'm interested in upsizing and I need to borrow $500,000 to buy a particular house or home that I've been looking out for. But the thing is, I've got to sell my home first and I want to try and move into the home that, uh, that I purchase and accomplish it in the same transaction. So let's just say that's your scenario. You need to respond in a way that demonstrifies or allows them to think that what they're asking for isn't a long stretch. And so the best way of amplifying the realism of the customer getting what they want is to tell the customer a story about a particular client that you may have de dealt with before that fundamentally is in a similar was in a similar position or had the same goals that this customer that you're speaking to has today. And by conveying stories to your potential customer about what you've done with previous clients, you amplify the realism of the person obtaining the ideal outcome. Now, while we want to try and amplify the first two attributes here, what we want to do for the second two attributes, point three and point four, is reduce the outcomes of point three and four. What does that mean? Well, if you think about it, let's just say you're talking to a customer who wants to consolidate two or three credit cards, a car loan, and maybe some other loan into their mortgage so that fundamentally they can save money on interest. You want to talk up and demonstrify to the customer that maybe they're spending five grand a month on payments at the moment, and if you were to refinance them, they would save $1,200 uh, on their existing arrangement. So if we can reduce the cost in our pitch, we're going to drag the customer closer towards us. And the last thing is sacrifice. In other words, how difficult is it going to be for this customer to obtain the mortgage that they want to obtain? Now, most mortgage customers, I can assure you, have a few reservations about applying for a mortgage. They worry about how much information am I going to have to give you? How difficult is it for me to find that information? You know, how many years of tax returns do I need? Bank statements do I need? Pay stubs do I need? All that time that the mortgage customer has to put in is about the sacrifice that they need to make in order to get the ideal outcome. So if you're putting together a pitch or an offer that is designed to make the mortgage customer feel foolish if they say no to it, you have to talk about the ease at which or the support that you are going to give to the customer so that you can reduce the sacrifice or the perceived sacrifice that they need to make in order to get their ideal outcome. Now those four things are hugely important when you're speaking to a mortgage customer. And can you see that if you allow your conversation with the mortgage customer to just go down the pathway of what's the best rate, you avoid or really negate your ability to be able to put forward a proposal that the customer can say yes to. Now, often mortgage brokers will say, hey, I couldn't compete on rates, so that's why I didn't get the customer across the line. I want you to shift your thinking. If you want to double your closing rates, I want you to think about this instead. Think to yourself where a mortgage customer says, hey, I can get a better rate somewhere else. Number one, did I control the conversation so it was gonna to point to the ideal outcome? And number two, did I demonstrify my value in this transaction? And I can assure you that any mortgage customer who ends a conversation with you on the basis of, hey, leave it with me and I'll get back to you, or I can get a cheaper rate somewhere else. Any conversation that goes 
on those lines is generally a sign that you haven't demonstrated the value that you can bring to this transaction. Now, we have to respect the perspective of the typical mortgage customer. They have no idea about you, who you are, whether your products are going to perform as you described, whether that's the best outcome that they can get. But what you have to focus on is demonstrating your value in this um, arrangement or negotiation or deal that you're constructing for your mortgage customer. And when you want to exemplify the value that you bring, your first step has to be being able to see the world through the mortgage customer's eyes. And what I mean by that is by asking questions about what they want to achieve before you get into delivering a solution, you are gonna set yourself on a trajectory of the customer feeling, hey, this person's different. And the reason why they're different is because they're interested in me. Now, a simple way of doing this at the start of any conversation you have with a customer, whether it's face-to-face, -face, over Zoom or over the phone, is to start out by saying to the mortgage customer, words to the effect of, well, thanks for booking into my calendar. Look, can I tell you from the onset, I don't purport that I can help every single inquirer because indeed I can't. So what I like to do in conversations like this is to find out more about my customer, in this case you. So would it be okay if I ask you a few questions? Because when I get the answers to those questions, I'm gonna be in a better position to tell you whether I can help you or whether I can't. Is that okay? And of course, the mortgage customer is going to say, sure, go ahead. Now, your first question has to be, okay, so let me just ask you straight off the bat, what is it that prompted you to book into my calendar and attend this appointment today? What I want you to think about is this. There has to have been some occurrence that has gone on in the customer's life that's brought them to this point of, wanting a new mortgage and it's your job to find out what that is. Now generally the answer to that first question of what is it that brought you to book into my calendar will not be the answer that you're looking for. Most customers would respond to that by giving you a superficial very high level reason why they want a, uh, a new mortgage. Now, the mistake that I see being made all the time by mortgage brokers is, once they get that answer, they move on. But let me tell you, the first answer that the customer gives you is not the answer you're looking for. So let's just imagine this conversation for one moment. Uh, Mr. Customer, what prompted you to book into my calendar today? Well, uh, we've, my wife and I have been thinking about, um, uh, you know, maybe renovating our home and we wanted to know how much equity we could uh, uh, get out of it, how much cash out we could get out of our mortgage. Now, most mortgage brokers at this point in time would go, okay, and jump into the numbers scenario so that they can give that answer to the customer. My advice is if you want to create an offer that a customer finds difficult to say no to, you invest another five minutes in seeing the world through the eyes of your customer. And so if a customer says, well, I'm looking to renovate my home or remodel my home, what's the next question? Well, the next question is, okay, and so what's wrong with the home you have at the moment? To which the customer might say, well, it's 50 years old, 40 years old, the kitchen is very dated, we have appliances that don't work really well, and uh, we were just sort of thinking about renovating our kitchen, and we also thought that we might remodel our bathroom at the same time. Oh, okay, interesting. Can I ask you another question? If we can make this happen for you, can you describe to me what the end result would look like? So in other words, asking the customer, what's the image in your mind of what that ideal outcome is? Because the ideal outcome isn't about the mortgage, it's not about the rate, it's about what's driving them to have this conversation with you. 
Tell me a little bit more about the kitchen that you're looking to create. Tell me a little bit more about how you would renovate or remodel your home. Tell me a little bit more why, about why you might want another bedroom on your home. Now, it's the answers to this layer of questions that are gonna put you in a good place of beginning to see the world through the eyes of your customer's uh, mind, essentially. So asking those questions is critically important. The next question I would ask is, okay, can I ask, what have you done so far about trying to achieve this objective? Ask that question. Then the next question is, so can I ask, why haven't you just gone to a bank or some other lender up until now um, to accomplish this? Now, the key point here is this. A mortgage customer, they can apply for a mortgage online, they can walk into a, a bank branch, they can you know, pretty easily obtain a mortgage without you involved in the transaction. There must be something about the ideal outcome that has you or someone like you bound up in the transaction. So asking the question about, so can I just ask why haven't you done this in the first place? Now, you will get answers like, oh, I'm time poor, didn't know where to start, didn't know whether I could achieve this objective, um, I find all the stuff on the internet terribly confusing. All of those answers help you create an offer that pitches to your customer's ideal outcome. Look, I'm time poor, I don't have much time, I was hoping to get um, you know, the support of a professional like you to help me put it together. Speaking to the sacrifice side of things. So, okay, you might answer that, um, so, uh, though, that series of questions. The next thing you've got to think about is this. Have you got some sort of time frame in mind as to when you'd like this to happen by? Now, this is speaking to um, this ideal outcome again. Well, the person might tell you, hey, my wife is well, pregnant or we're expecting our third child uh, in eight months time and we wanted to get these renovations happening for a long time, but now that we're expecting another child, it's become important to us that we do this before the child is born. Once again, actually understanding what the ideal outcome is for the customers. So hopefully through this video, you've been able to understand that by associating an amplification or an improvement in the ideal outcome and the realism for your customer of retaining that, out, that ideal outcome, and we've been able to reduce how much the cost is in terms of, you know, you might be able to say to your customer, hey, um, I dealt with someone last week who was in a similar situation to you. They wanted to take $100,000 uh, of equity from their home so that they could remodel their kitchen and bathroom. And the fantastic thing was we were also able to consolidate their credit cards. Turns out that their new payment is actually less than what it was previously. Can you see that how if we can reduce the cost we end up creating an offer that becomes appealing to the customer. And if you've liked this video, what I want you to do is tell me in the comments whether this scenario has made sense to you. Has it helped you in terms of your ability to create a better offer uh, for your customer? If it has, make sure you hit that like button, click the subscribe button, and leave your comments in the comment section. And I look forward to catching up with you next time in my next video. Bye for now.